Okay. Yes. We're back. <gasps> oh my God, we made it back. Welcome back to our channel. Yeah. It's only taken us forever. All of November, yeah. all of December, nearly all of January. Three months. Yeah. Um, not our fault, guys. I don't know if you know, but we live in Paris. Mm hmm And we've had restrictions about how we could see each other. We're, we promise we have fun things in store in 2021. Oh, so much fun stuff. So much amazing stuff. It's gonna so, blow your mind. Yeah, Emily in Paris season two, whenever that comes out, <gasps> we'll be there. Mm. So this is our roundup episode. Yeah. <laughs> Seven, eight, <laughs> nine. nine. We're gonna do a roundup of some Emily. We're gonna, we have watched episodes seven, eight, and nearly all of nine. Yeah, seven, seven eight, eight, nine. nine. We're going to do a quick roundup of those three, and then we're going to watch ten, uh, as usual. Okay. Let's get into it. Let's start with let's do a, let's do a seven, a recap of seven. Let's do seven. I took notes. Okay, me too. I took some notes. So we watched this separately in our homes. Yeah. So first of all, whoa, hold on. Oh, I want to be I want to be ready. Okay, first of all, yes. So first of all, let's recap what happened in seven. So it was called um, French. Ending or something? Oh, I didn't take that good of a... I didn't make no, that no, me neither. Minutes. That's why I'm oh. now having to check. Oh. I wrote, I forgot how annoying all the characters are. Mm. Mindy, Emily. When I turned on... Ooh. <laughs> there she blows. Seven was French ending. After agreeing to watch over an American actress at a chic red carpet event, Emily finds her knight and her famous charge spinning out of control. Mm. All right. So, Sarah, do you want to go first with your notes? Okay, well, this scene opened and she runs into Sylvie shopping before work. And I was like, shopping before work? No shops are open. <laughs> before a, a Boutique shops aren't open before 11. 10, if you're lucky. I tried to run an errand at a pharmacy this morning before 9 a.m. It was like, sorry, mm, no. we're not up and about. They were talking about, when they were in the office and they were talking about this actress, and then Luke was talking about, like, oh, American films are so cheesy and everyone has a happy ending and French mm. films are about life. And I'm like, French films are about life. <sighs> if life is sitting around a table. Which it is it in is. France. <laughs> Literally. So, <laughs> French films are about French life, which is basically having meals that go on forever and affairs and like depressing like they love a good movie about like a family drama that's why they love oh god i can't remember his name that english director who makes really grim and depressing movies and they're just like we cannot get, get enough. enough i don't know who that is why is my brain i have to check and, and come back to you i cannot remember i cannot remember what i was feeling is like emily is written with the confidence of a mediocre white man. 100%. She has the confidence of a mediocre white man because she is just like, um, I, I can do this. Absolutely. Like, she doesn't question herself. She's just like, of course I can do it. And there's no doubt. She's, yeah. ju she's just like a man, just like, can you do this? Yeah, I can do this. No problem. Why not? Sure. I've got this. But then she meets the actress and first thing she does, come on, she takes she off did. all her clothes. Oh, I was just going to get there. Why did that... I was like, why is she naked? She takes off all her clothes and she's just like, oh, I need to masturbate. And it's like, who wrote this? Yeah. Who wrote this? Or like, is this like a... Because it's written by women, I think. Women and, and like, a gay man. But it's like, would anyone do that? Would a man do that? Would... A it's just I so thought she weird. was going to get me too. I was like, oh, is this like a weird lesbian me too thing where she's like coming on to Emily? But... Who knows? Emily was looking hideous as ever. I, I said, think, why oh. is she taking off her clothes? You've not touched on it, but the first thing I wrote was, Gabrielle is being sulky and out of order. Sulky and out of order? Yeah. What was he acting like? Why? Because he was all just like, mm, my girlfriend wants, and her family want to help me buy my restaurant and realise my oh, dream. Oh, right. And he's all just like, mm, I just want to do it on my own. And it's like, well, you can't. Yeah, you need a loan. But, but he is a man. Yeah, but he's being a dick. Yeah. But then, the party. Sylvie's green dress. Oh. oh. I wasn't loving that green dress. What? I thought she looked incredible. I wrote, I'm not sure about Sylvie's dress. I know. I wrote, amazing in all caps. So beautiful. I thought she looked so beautiful. Her body looked amazing. I love the green. True. Okay, the green was nice. I don't know, it felt a bit too asymmetrical. For well, me. it was it was asymmetrical. It was so asymmetrical. You're either down with the asymmetric or not. Or not. I would like to say about the party. Yes, tell me about the party, because that is a famous place where they were. No? That's right. Oh, two things. One, Emily had a great red lip. I like a red lip. She really was rocking that colour. She does look 
her makeup's nice, even if her clothes are horrible. I felt the clothes in 789 were getting better, though. No. Really? No. Oh. No. no. I, thought, I thought it was improved. Okay, no. continue on. Um, they were at the uh, Musée Fête Foraine. Say that again slowly for those trying to learn French at home and me. Musée de Fête Foraine. I have to say it quickly. What's a foraine? It's like fairground. Oh, fairground. And it was in midnight in Paris, this... this. Oh, was it? They I do loads of functions. Yeah. They do loads of functions. I was like, I know it. this is a famous place in Paris and mm. somewhere you can actually go and they have a lot of parties because, like, how great to have a party there. Exactly. And it's all sort of like rides from like yeah. fairgrounds and they've got mer- like carousel rides and, and, and it's really interesting you can do these guided tours and it's in Bercy where, and it's really it's really nice so the girl the famous actress who's in Paris is behaving like no one in Paris knows who she is if she was really famous French people do watch American movies she, they do they would know her Probably, yeah. It finishes up with her taking a picture of the discarded dress excuse me you have jumped Emily kisses Gabriel oh I didn't even note that down <laughs> <laughs> Emily kisses Gabriel. It's true. Emily for the second time. They get the drunk. Kiss. They're in a bar in a club and she yeah. kisses Gabriel. Gabriel the kiss. OMG cuz she did it again. Oops, I did it again. She's a disloyal little bitch. She is. You she, have no girl code. She is a cow cuz Cammy is a queen. And we Emily stand, we stand, Kimmy. Is a skank. Neither of them should be kissing. No. They are both They're bad. both in the wrong. I also loved how Sylvie came in and just was like, listen, you're going to open up that room to us. Yeah. It was very much her energy. Now, in real life, she would have done it in French. I would have loved yes. to hear that in French, actually. Me I would have, too. with just subtitles, because French people can really dress you down in a very polite way. It would have been very... Um, educational to watch. Yeah. Another thing that I wrote down was that when they're waiting for the Uber mm. at one point to like... Both, and the Uber's going backwards. And the Uber's going backwards. That's true. I was like, I don't know if that's just Paris or every... But in Paris, it will literally happen. It will be like two minutes away, 12 minutes away. And you can see the car just going backwards on the street. You're like, what are you... Where is the car going? So when he was like, I have a better idea. I was like, the Metro. They're finally going to go on the Metro. No, but he take but they do use a, a city scooter. They use a city scooter. And now I mm. thought at first it was his own scooter and that Me too. And I was like, You had your scooter the whole time? Why didn't you go on the Why scooter? Why didn't you go on the scooter in the first place? Chalero, but at the end we saw it was City Scoot, which is a real thing. And it is I've only been on the back of a scooter twice and it is really fun. Mm-hmm. I not with a love interest, but if it was someone I was interested in. Well, I was rescued on the back of a scooter. <laughs> you know, a very famous scooter. Oliver G, podcaster extraordinaire, his red scooter. I, I was eight months pregnant. There was a massive strike, and I couldn't get on the metro. And I had this important doctor's appointment at the hospital. And I just Oliver G lived in my neighbourhood, and I phoned him up when I was like, "Can you take me to the hospital?" And so he <laughs> rode me on the back of his scooter. He was very reluctant for obvious reasons because she's massively pregnant. It was enormous, absolutely enormous. But I mean, it's great. And he took me to the hospital. He waited. He took me home. Very like nice. some illicit Australian baby daddy. <laughs> Now, why hasn't that not been on his podcast? Like, the time that you have to take a pregnant woman on the back of your scooter during a transport strike to the maternity. I know, right? That's a good story. I just said, Gabrielle can give me a ride any day. <sighs> no. He's and cute. then she takes a photo of the dress. Oh, she takes a photo of the dress. And she just, but everything she does for social media is so just haphazard, just like, oh, I happen to do this, and it gets like 12 billion likes. And we know that's not true, because everything influencers do is extremely thought out and planned. Yeah. Yeah, and it kind of undermines their job. You know, they work hard. And she's just like, I just take a picture of this and everyone's going to like it. All right, 20,000 likes. Episode 7. That's Over. a wrap. That's a wrap on 7. 8. Okay, now 8, honestly, has was my favorite episode of the entire series. I like 8 too. Family Affair. Emily's weekend trip to a friend's chateau fr- fizzles like day-old champagne. Ooh. Back in Paris, Mindy's reluctant meet-up with old friends ends on a high note oh girl that note this was literally my favorite episode of the like watching episode seven i was like oh god i don't know if i can do this anymore but then episode eight was so good i liked episode very eight. layered first of all she starts off i don't know if you remember the luke but she has on white knee-high boots I do. A red jacket horrible and a blue turtle like i kind of liked it those boots do you know what the problem with the boots was She's got no legs. I know. Her she, legs are like sticks. I know. There's no shade. If you've got stick-like legs, that's amazing. It's just, I don't know, I just kind of wanted a mm. leg. I love the leather beret, beret of Camille, and I love that Camille is just a low-key champagne heiress, which of course she is, which is why she works at the gallery. Mm. Yeah. 
Like, Camille is the girl that you want to be friends with in Paris, so stop kissing her boyfriend. Mm. Camille is worth more than Gabrielle. So much more. Oh. So much more. Yeah. She has asked Emily to represent her family, to, like, do the social media marketing extravaganza for her family. Right. And so she invites Emily down for the weekend to meet her family and see the chateau and, and you know, see the champagne region. And talk to her mom. And talk to the family. And yeah. so Emily says yes. Gabrielle is not going to come, which is good because they're feeling awkward because of the kiss. They're feeling a bit awkward. Last minute, they're just about to leave. Gabrielle comes. Problem, though, is that she has a tiny sports car, a tiny red sports car that only has two seats, <laughs> no roof. Which is very, you know, this is this is Paris. It rains every second, every other second. So. Exactly. And then, and but this doesn't cause a problem for Cami because even though it's what, like a two, three hour drive through motorways and toll and all stuff like this, right. she tells Emily to sit on Gabrielle's lap, <laughs> which she does, and then they apparently drive there to Champagne. Like that. that can't happen. No. The the French police, they are on it. Those traffic police, they would... Woo, woo, woo. They'd have had them in seconds. They I mean, would have in, got out of Paris. In that car, too? Yeah. Like, that's a hot little car she has. I loved in the beginning of the episode, I wrote the French Inquisition when it was Luke, uh, Julian, and Sylvie that were, like, grilling Emily. And she's mm. like, I didn't have sex with him! And they're all, like, yelling at her. Yeah. I quite enjoyed that. I thought that was pretty good. I love the Chinese bridal party. Yes. The first, Mindy, when she's out with her friends the first night, right before Emily's, like, getting ready to go, she's like, I'm going to Champagne. And we just meet all the girls, and the one, like, throws up, and they're, like, doing the Champagne showers. Because in the meantime, Mm. Mindy, um, a gang of her friends have come down for a hen do. Happens a lot in Paris. Yeah. Um, They come down Come down from China. Come down from China. So they're all there for the hen do. So Emily goes off. In the meantime, Mindy's back in Paris with the hens, and she's not looking forward to it because she's anxious that they're going to find out that she's a nanny and is no longer, you know, an heiress. And also a Chinese heiress like the other girls. I thought they were hilarious, and I loved their style. They looked amazing. They they looked amazing, and they looked so fun. Mm. I was like, let's go on that weekend. Then they arrive at Camille's family home, and we find see her mother is quite the ball buster, Mm. and Gabriel doesn't love her. And then we just see the dad naked sunbathing. Gerard. The dad was my favorite character of he, all of the characters. I love him. I love the Jean Pierre. He's the Jean Pierre. I said, "LOL, the naked dad, Gerard, which is my father-in-law's name." So it really like hit home, and he's such like a bubbling fool, which yes. is perfect. And I liked him. He was very uh, Burnham. But what the fuck? I'm sorry. They had this chateau. Okay, fair enough. But they obviously just filmed it from the outside and didn't have a chateau because you only ever see <laughs> one room. In the chateau. There's only, you only ever see one room. And then one tiny office, which does look like it's in a chateau. And then in the evening, they make it look like a chateau by burning a trillion candles. They've got, like, a chandelier, which they've put on the table. And there's, like, so many candles. It's just like... <gasps> and everyone's just like... I'm like, how many candles are they burning? Do they normally have this many candles? Is it, like... Were they reducing their lighting budget? Like, what was going on? There were so many candles. So I just think that they just obviously had, like, one room somewhere in someone's house. They're like, how can I make it look like a chateau? Candles! Okay, but I, I love the candles. There were too I many candles. I love the candles. I didn't realize there were too many. I was like, <laughs> this is so beautiful. I love the candelabra. I didn't see the chandelier that was also on the table. I was just like, oh, the candlelight's so beautiful. And, like, <laughs> French country homes. French country homes. We're talking about a chateau. Like, it's really, you know, everyone says, like, how beautiful Paris is, but a really gorgeous home in the countryside with a thousand candles. A thousand candles. It's doing something for me. Too many candles. All right, then, sorry, I skipped ahead. Oh, my God, but the cock joke, the cock au vin joke. Oh, well, it starts off, she goes, and the the dad is naked, and then there's a strategically placed... placed Champagne bottle, and he's like, You want a call? <laughs> Which is hilarious. I mean, yeah, that just... worked. But then it just kept saying, like, Oh, you must try Gabrielle's cook over. Oh, and he also has a nice aubergine. aubergine. But mm. I thought Emily looked really nice there. Her outfit, she had in a beanie and a joking? nice knit sweater. What was that hat? It was clearly the summer, and she was wearing a pink hat. I think it was supposed to be fall, and I thought she looked a bit more Parisian. I liked her sweater and the beanie. No. Okay, we have taken a turn, ladies and gentlemen. Nope. Um, 
so ugly. Then she goes to the champagne tasting to get away from Gabriel. And I was like, ooh, very hot champagne dude. That's probably the brother. It was. And then I was like, and look at that bitchy British woman who's just like, you're not supposed to drink all of the champagne. Which would never happen because no. the British woman would have drunk it. So she goes to... <laughs> she, she would have drunk the whole thing she, and just been like, mm. Exactly. So she goes to find out more about the wine, the, the champagne region and the, and the house. And she does a little tour. And true, very hot dude, which is often what they do because then you drink more and buy more. And, but I was thinking, if that's the brother, because Cammy had said, oh, my, you're going to meet my brother, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I thought, but if that's the brother that's going to take over the business, he's not going to be doing these janky, boring tours. That was my thing, too. And then when he said, um, I've worked here uh, since college, I've worked here since college, and I was like, he wouldn't have said college, he would have said uni. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, something is off here but I believed it was the brother but I was like this no. is a bit I was like he wouldn't be giving yeah he wouldn't doing wine tasting tours he was if cute. he just finished business school exactly. but I thought but I suspected nothing else but then, I suspected nothing else and I thought like oh he is he's hot yeah also Emily drinks allegedly so much champagne she would have been throwing up in her hat oh my god by well, the end of that she well, really the next morning non-stop well the next morning when she pretended you know she kind of had like oh I have such a hangover I'm like yeah girl champagne mm. will give you a wicked wicked hangover so needless to say she the brother the brother is really very very hot they do some flirting they do some embarrassing flirting with the coops and the oh, oh god yeah but then I wrote the candlelit dinner is so gorgeous mmm a domain <laughs> okay Amber's like this is a fire as it so the dinner's over yeah she goes upstairs Mindy's like turn on your live yeah, go on. I'm gonna. My friend's going on Instagram Live. Turn on your phone. Check it out. Now this part was the part I've been waiting for because mm. I knew there was a drag queen moment. Mm. And did you did you recognize the drag queen at the club they were at? I didn't recognize the drag queen. Was okay, it? I will. Mm. So they're at the club and her friends are sitting at the table and there's a drag queen who comes on stage. She's looking gorgeous. That drag queen is called Sublime, mm-hmm. and she was the drag queen at my birthday that I took a photo with. Oh. Remember we saw the show yeah. outside? So during um, during the summer we went to a drag show, but it was like all played in windows, like hanging off the balcony. And we were at a bar downstairs. So it was really fun. And afterwards, I sheepish, sheepishly asked to get my picture taken from the drag queens. And she was so beautiful. And we both had on these fluffy coats, but she had on like the real feather coat. Like mine was from H&M and hers was actual feathers. I was like, oh my God. It was an unfortunate who wore it better. Definitely the drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> I realized in my head I've been calling her sublime. It's like probably sublime because she's French. And she's on Emily in Paris. Yes. And have... she looked amazing. Also, Mindy, like her friends were dressed up so like up here. And she was very much down here. I thought her fashion did not match the girls. Which is unusual because Mindy is normally really going for like, it. Like thigh high p- neon skin snakeskin boots. boots. So I was like, what's going on here? I loved her friends. I would have liked to have seen her friends just tear yeah. up in Paris. And they're like, get up there and sing. And she does. And she, she gets does. up there and she sings. What does she sing? Chandelier by Sia. Do you see? She's singing Chandelier and Emily is literally trying to eat around one. Oh, a giant <laughs> chandelier in her face. Like this chandelier has crashed to the table. Cut back to Emily. But she gets it on with Hot Brother because she's just like, he's, she's like, let's have more champagne. He's like, okay, you booze hound. And then she's like, how come we don't have flutes? Because he says, do you want a coupe? Because they have the, the little coupes. But then he was all just like, these are sexier because they were based on Marie Antoinette's breasts. Which I've heard, but is that an urban legend? I believe so. Yeah. Um, and then she's just like, holds up the glass to her bosom. And then he grabs the other one. Like a 17-year-old boy would. Like a 17-year-old boy would. And then she lunges at him like a booze hound would. Oh, God. And, but then he's like on and then top they, of her. And she's like, go slow go so to see. Because he's 17. Oh, oh, God. Now, and we find it out the next day at breakfast. And I was like, oh, my God, he's 17. But he isn't. He is clearly, clearly not a gorgeous man. But obvious, but he does look young. He does have the boyish look. Because then the other brother's there. And the other brother looks fine. But he looks, like, ugly compared so ugly. to the others. It's just like, oh, hi. Yeah, of course you're the business school brother. Like, you look like a man. Yeah, exactly. Now... So the 17 part, that was definitely cringe. And mm. I was like, that's why he said I started working there after college, because college is middle school, mm. which uh, they explain as the joke. However, 
Of course, it all comes together for Emily just like that. So the mum, this is something that I thought was very weird. Oh, very, God. Very, very weird. Disgusting and just would not happen. She comes down for breakfast. She's got love bites. She realises her embarrassing shagging of a 17-year-old. The mother says, Emily, come with me. And they go to the other room in the chateau that we see, which is the office. And she says, Emily's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you were so young. She's like, just tell me, is my son a good lover? <laughs> I was like, that is disgusting. Emily takes this opportunity to pitch her idea, which she seems to get in just one second. Because the mother says to her, oh, our real problem is we've just got loads of champagne that we can't, that we don't know what to do with. It's just waste. It was like, is it? No, that doesn't, no. I mean, I think there is excess, but anyway, I don't know about it. Anyway, so she, then no, Emily's like, I've got this great idea. Let's just sell it to spray. Because, you know, Mindy and her friends are spraying the champagne, spraying the champagne and she's like, what? I don't know. And she's like, we'll call it champagne. Something useless. Because like, the dad is useless. Emily's idea is to, like, sell bottles of champagne to just be used to spray. It's a very curious idea, but everyone Sacrilegious. seems to love it. Sacrilegious. Obviously. Like, French people just know. If you suggest to make a mimosa with champagne, they're deeply offended. They are. Her outfit, she had these um, really tight straight leg jeans and a ruffled blouse. With oh, gr- so and ugly. I, I love that outfit. So with ugly. the green block heels, a little ankle strap. I didn't notice her heels. The heels I noticed when she got into the car because they were Christian Louboutin, but I have a pair similar and not Christian Louboutin mm. in the shape. And I love them. And then on the mom's desk... She had a book called Sapien. Oh, I saw that. Which is always knocking my Audible series off the number one spot. <laughs> Still. Still. Mm. So I'm like, I've seen this Sapien book, and it's just knocking me down the what, whole time. What Audible series would that be, Sarah? God Save My English, available now on audible.fr. Um, have you read Sapien? No. It's great. Oh. <laughs> So there you go. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying it's not deserving of knocking us down, but I was like, oh, I recognize this book because <laughs> it's a number one bestseller. <laughs> so that is... That's, season, that is that's that. episode eight. <laughs> Nine. Nine. An American auction in Paris. A charity auction. A donated gown and an avant-garde design duo add up to trouble for Emily as she catches the eye of Pierre Cadeau's heir apparent. <laughs> Emily goes for lunch with the American Friends of the Louvre or something and it's this old lady and she is just really really fun and they just go to this like posh bistro where everything's in English <laughs> I love this old southern lady and I want to be her because there are like these odd uh, Americans just around Paris that have so much money not me <laughs> that have so much money and they're just like oh yeah we're just here like kicking off in our you know, luxury apartment in the fifth just because oil tycoons and such. Well, let's get down to brass tacks. I was like, yes. She, I'm like, I want to be her when I grow up. We're going to have an auction to raise money for the Louvre. I mean, does the Louvre need any money? No. I don't think so. I mean, maybe now. It's been shot for (laughs) ages. But she asked Emily if she could get a dress for from Pierre Cadeau because she represents him um, for the auction Emily does. Because it's that easy. Because she meets the heir apparent, who obviously instantly falls in love with Emily. What's not to love? And he's like, we'll see. I'm like, oh, this is just kind of random. To be like, can I have a... Also, it is it is kind of random to be like, can I have a coacher dress just to auction off? Mm. Thank you. Yeah. What? Coacher. Coacher dress. Well, he Couture. gives her a dress. Um, now, don't jump too far ahead. Oh, let's okay. go. Let's go. So they meet now at Camille's art gallery. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm going to come meet with you. Camille looks amazing in this like shimmery black wrap dress. Um, Emily's been avoiding Gabriel because, you know, mm-hmm. the whole weekend and all of that. He shows up. Uh, Sylvie is there. The young, what's his name? Not Pierre Cadeau. The other guy. The other guy. The Cadeau too mm-hmm. is there. Sylvie, I kind of know. She's kind of like, oh. I kind of like this uh, mm-hmm. guy. And then it's like, oh, but he obviously likes Emily. Mm-hmm. And that's when they talk about the painting. And horny, lecherous Luke mm-hmm. just is so gross. Mm-hmm. I used to be Team Luke. And now he said slit. And I was like, I'm not in. I'm not in anymore. Luke, like, your character is now just disgusting. Luke looks at a piece of modern art and he's like, it's obviously about sex. Yeah. And then describes the describes it in quite 
his uh, Luke details. Yeah. He said mm-hmm. slit, so figure yeah. it out. Antoine, to win Sylvie back, he's been trying to win her back, and he sends over some earrings. Hmm. Well, th- he sends over a present, and she's just trying to send everything back. So then the dudes, Julian, Luke, and Emily, they open it up, and Emily says, Nice it's earrings! Things. But then Luke is like, These are nipple rings! I don't think Sylvie's got pierced nipples. No, absolutely not. Or nipple clamps. And if they were nipple clamps, they're very small looking. Mm. At the same time, yeah. Pierre gives the dress to Emily for this auction. But it's an important time in Paris because it is fashion week, which it always seems to be fashion week. You yeah. know it's fashion week because you see lots of really tall people. Fashionable people. Tall women. Very tall women walking around wearing strange clothes. You know it's fashion week. So fashion week's go ha- heading up. So Pierre's getting ready with his collection. But in town are some young bloods. Some young bloods. Some weirdo designers. I forgot the name of them. The space suit great, guys. Great, gray space or something <laughs> like that. Gray space. Yeah. Yeah. Gray How did you remember that? I don't know. It's impressive. <laughs> and when they show up to the auction... And they're like, oh, we're here for the dress. I knew they were up to no good. I kind of felt like they were trying to blend them of like, you know, Supreme, the streetwear brand that's Mm. like skateboarders that like they release. Okay. So basically, there is no model to wear the dress. Emily puts on the dress. It fits her because she has a sample size body. Exactly. She does look amazing. The dress is amazing. Like great and then these guys they win they the, bid on it and they win it for 38,000 38, euros and then I knew they're up to no good it felt odd and then mm. they come up and they rock up and they just blast her with paint they paint blast the dress it's a white dress they paint blast her with, with which I thought was quite fun but to be honest they should have just not bought it and done that it this reminded just... me of that French comedian and I can't remember her name and she like she gate crashed the sort of Chanel runway uh, in Fashion Week. What? Oh, you must have seen this. Oh She's my really, God. really Amazing. fun. So they they had like built this sort of runway and it's made to look like the roofs of Paris and like all the, you know, they were just like mm, 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 walking along and she just like walked through the audience, got up on stage, got up on the runway and it was obviously just a normal side she's very <laughs> thin and pretty but she's right. like a normal not a model. She's not a model. And she was just like strutting along and some of the models were just like whatever and then some of them were just like get her out of here and it was it, it was really really fun because it was so ridiculous because it's so ridiculous fashion i love everything it. so let's just finish these last 10 minutes the newspaper was called something funny l'étoile bleu l'étoile bleu the blue star fashion week list le scandale cadeau gray space mode une robe de couturier saccagée par un groupe de designers lors du gala devant aux enchères des amis du louvre Gabriel. Thanks for checking in on me. He is so naughty. Tired. Gabriel is coming on to her. That was a lingering bees. It was a lingering bees. There's something there. But now we have a still shot. It looks like Pierre has got a tray of creme brulee in front of him. And he is just going to have... Is he going to eat his He's going to eat his feelings and pain with a bunch of creme brulee. <laughs> <laughs> this looks incredible. <laughs> I'm not to eat. You just tap the creme brulee. I'm just breaking this top. I think that does look very satisfying. Yeah. What Pierre is saying is true. He used to dress the most beautiful women and now he dresses old ladies and they're all dying. It is true that when you go to really fancy shops, they've got these amazing clothes, really cool and interesting, but you think, who can afford them? Old Old ladies. ladies. Fearless by wearing pajamas. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. If you wear pajamas out in Paris, you are fearless because you are going to get some looks. It is true. The athleisure wear is not a regular... It's been slow to catch on here. Yeah. What? Sarah, what do the French do when things are at their darkest? Drink wine. Smoke cigarettes. What do they do when things are at their darkest? What do they do when things are at their darkest? Think about it. Go to the talk theater. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Over wine and cigarettes. I said, what do they do when the bombs were falling in World War Two? And she was like, hid. Which is kind of true. And he's like, no, they, they made, made love. love. <laughs> yes. Are we going to watch them have sex? I hope not. And scene. And scene on nine. So we just have ten left to go. Ten is the last one. Will we get that recorded before this next confinement starts? I have no idea. Good question. 
we promise for season two, we will lock ourselves in the room and we will just pound these out. Yes. No matter how much we want to kill ourselves. We will do it. How drunk we might get. No, we're going to do it. We'll just do it. There were some bad fashion choices. There were some awkward kissing and sex scenes. I am still hashtag team Cammy and Sylvie. Oh, I love Sylvie. Mm. Sylvie's really endearing herself to me. She is kind of cranky, but uh, I'm down with it. I'm down with it. Do you have a USB plug in your lamp? Yeah. Interesting. I just noticed that myself. <laughs> like, so if you Why? need to charge something? I I, I don't even know. I, I, like, I, I've got no idea what it does. What would that, yeah, what would that do? Maybe you can plug in your phone. To charge. Okay. Well, we've just learned something about Amber's lamp. Thank you for joining us and sticking with us all these months. We promise the next one will come out as soon as we can, and then we'll try to be on a regular schedule that's it. Like, share, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Sarah D. Comedy. 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 Mm-hmm. Follow Amber on Instagram at Amber Don't Comedy. Follow me on she Instagram. won't. So just go to panampodcast.com. Dot com. Listen to her podcast. And just, you know, hang on tight. For the next one. For the next one. We'll it's see you been soon. a ride. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.